things that we were doing. It was just, here are some things that I happen to know about the dinosaur. And it was really scattershot and in retrospect, kind of terrible. So now what I do is I extensively research where did we, where were we when we first discovered the animal? What has changed over the years? What's the most recent uh, information that we have about it? So it's a branching process. I, I, I've been writing our Velociraptor episode most recently, and step one was just to read everything I could find about Velociraptor, which it turns out is yes. a lot. Um, and there's even more if you can read Russian, but I can't, so I, I was saved that. Uh, the process starts mostly with Wikipedia, actually, because especially for the most popular dinosaurs and for dinosaurs that we humans have known about mm -hmm. for a long time, it's it's got an extensive list of sources. Oh, yeah. And uh, the, that that little references portion at the bottom of Wikipedia is is great. Beyond that, I really like going to blogs. I love how many paleontologists have blogs and how many paleontologists post online about what they've been working on. Um, not just paleontologists, but paleo artists, enthusiasts. I, I love Dr. Cow's blog. Uh, I love Mickey Mortimer's blog. If I need to know about, you know, ankylosaurs, I can go to Pseudoplocephalus. If I want to know about sauropods, I can go to sauropod vertebra picture of the week. It's beautiful. There is so much information out there if you're willing to engage with it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We've been to all of those blogs too. Oh yeah, they're great resources. <laughs> as far as recent developments go, we, since the NSI shut down, we launched a Discord server for the Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong mm -hmm. specifically. And people on there have been extremely helpful with research. Like I'll post on there, like uh, I was talking about how I had an English translation of a, of a paper from Mongolia and it didn't have any of the figures. And somebody was like, oh, I have it in Russian and that one has figures. And it's like, okay, wow. thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so the internet facilitates every step of the process. Yeah, that's nice. great. So, so for our viewers, listeners who might not know NSI, that's National Science Institute. <laughs> so now Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong is in a different YouTube channel. A new, yep. That's true. We are, we are on our own YouTube channel. Uh, Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong is the name of the channel. We are leaving the old episodes on the NSI's channel uh, for the foreseeable future. We may revise them and re-upload them in an updated form. We're not sure yet, but all future episodes will all be on Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. So can I ask about the iguanodon behind you? <laughs> sure. So what I've been working on, we, we can't actually shoot yet because we have a space to shoot in, but it's not ready. Um, so in the interim, I've been making, I've been updating the graphics because we, we're obviously not going to be using the NSI graphics package anymore. So I was looking back at our very first episodes, I had this end credits animation. So while, while the credits were playing, there was this little animation in the background where an iguanodon would shift between, you know, the initial uh, Gideon Mantell restoration, then through the Waterhouse Hawkins and on through up to the modern day. Uh, and I was like, I could do better than this now because I, I spent like a day on it back then. So for the last uh, two and a half weeks, <laughs> I've, a I've, uh, I've been doing uh, a, a walk cycle of the different um, restorations going all the way through from the middle of the 19th century up through today. And I was surprised to learn that there have been developments this millennium, like in the 21st century. Or That was weird to say, but yes, <laughs> the 21st century. It's like every dinosaur discovery can be split across a millennium, which was interesting to think about. Yeah. But the, the idea of the show is fundamentally how have our ideas about these animals changed over time? So this seems like as good a way as any to sort of encapsulate that. Concept. Yeah, that's cool. I like the idea of the walk cycle too, because then you start with like the sprawl, the lizardy walk, and then... It's basically a pug iguana <laughs> or a, maybe a pit bull iguana. Yeah. <laughs> And then eventually, like, upright. <laughs> <laughs> so your dinosaurs are wrong. It's a two-person team. You work with Elizabeth Stack, who's also co-creator and the producer-editor. She does the production and direction of the videos. What's the process like? Like, we've talked about the research a little bit, but the whole... We've got this great behind-the-scenes right. video you've uploaded, but I'm sure there's even more to it. 
Yeah, well, we intend to make more behind the scenes videos once we actually are in production mm -hmm. properly. But basically, any aspect of the show that is animation is me. Any aspect of the show that involves physical people and objects and lights and cameras and the actual editing thereof is Liz. I was, I, I've had a bit of a lesson recently. We were doing the, the two-parter on Ornithoscalita. That was almost entirely me for reasons. And uh, I found that without Liz to streamline the episode and make decisions about, is this relevant? Should this be included here or should it be moved somewhere else? They're not great. <laughs> they're not, they're, they're watchable, but they could be much better. So um, her instincts are uh, invaluable on that one. But the, uh, the basic process is once the episode is written, I will create a, a sort of sketchy outline so that I have bullet points to work from. Um, the delivery, I don't use a teleprompter or anything. It's all just extemporaneous. The problem with that is it then requires a little bit more uh, work to take out all of my stammering and meandering and to basically make it look like I look know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but she's good at that. She handles all of the actual social media presence as well. I, she, she uploads the things. She posts the links everywhere. And she makes sure that the uh, links at mm -hmm. the end work. So how did the two of you start your Dinosaur Is It Wrong? Like, what was the inspiration behind it? Okay, so it's a kind of a confluence of things. The very first like inkling that I had to make a dinosaur show was that I had read a, a article about Xu Xing, the, the prolific Chinese paleontologist, who it turns out had not heard about dinosaurs until he got to university. <laughs> And that blew my mind that somebody who's like published, I don't even know how many papers as a child had not heard about these animals. Or if he had, maybe he had, you know, encountered a, a toy monster, but didn't realize that it was supposed to represent a real creature. So may, maybe it's natural that we gravitated towards toys eventually that because toys are a lens through which children are going to approach these animals. When we were working at the National Science Institute, we had a bunch of equipment all over the building that people could come in and use. And if it was unsafe in some way, or if there was a danger that you needed to be aware of, there was a little plastic dinosaur put on it. We called them safety dinosaurs. I don't know how the dinosaurs made them safer, but that that was the policy. Point is, we would be you know shooting a video somewhere in the lab and we would be on break or something and I would pluck one of the dinosaurs down from the wall and I would explain to whoever would listen or even people that wouldn't listen <laughs> that, uh, you know, this, this has the wrong head or the, this has the wrong number of toes. Or I distinctly remember the one that triggered the show was this awful kangaroo with scales that had just an iguana head put on. And I swear it was supposed to be an iguanodon, but produced by somebody who only had the name iguanodon to go on. Um, but Liz finally had had enough, I guess, and decided that I needed to explain this to a camera. <laughs> um, with the result that she now has to listen to me explain it over and over again as she edits the video. So I have some vengeance there. We had been looking for a way to demonstrate to people that other people could come in and, and contact the video team at the NSI to, to share what they were passionate about with the world. Like, I'm not a paleontologist. I'm, I'm an animator. Sometimes people are surprised by this. Um, I don't have any formal training in this, but I'm very interested in it. And we thought that, okay, if, if we can put this guy and make him sound like he's smart, maybe we can make you sound like you're smart. But people responded really well to the Solidosaurus video, like way beyond what we expected from, from our little weird toy video. And uh, here we are. Nice. <laughs> so how do you decide which dinosaurs you want to cover? Right. So in the past, we were basing this on uh, either what people requested in the YouTube comments as sort of a vague democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, we later shifted into, well, what what is interesting to talk about or what is a, a topic that we haven't covered or have we have we not done a ceratopsid yet but 
we are going to be shifting. We're going to have it where uh, the patrons will be able to choose what the next animal will be. That will be after Velociraptor because I have I have a lot of wow. Velociraptors. <laughs> yeah, all but one of these people sent me in the mail. So I, I feel like I, am, I, I have a responsibility to talk about Velociraptor. I like how there's a decent spread of like, awful to pretty good here so uh, it, it should be a good episode i hope uh, i think we own one of those yeah i think we own the one that you described <laughs> as pretty good is that like a safari yeah, one safari limited. yeah yeah it is safari limited <laughs> which is ironic because they also made this one which is just naked do you keep any of the dinosaur toys that people send you once you've covered the dinosaur yeah usually yes we um if somebody sends in a toy, we ask that they include like a note that most people do include a note anyway, like, hi, I like this dinosaur. But um, we, we ask that people specify whether they need them back. And if they do need it back, we will totally send it back. It might take a while. Uh, we had um, th this poor girl sent me a, a Styracosaurus toy and I had it for, I think, two years <laughs> before we sent it back to her. Because it was just, it, there was a delay before we could even get to the episode to, to shoot it. <laughs> I do hope that by approaching the topic through toys, we can give people maybe a, a look, a glimpse into the science behind these animals and, and maybe spark, maybe if, even if you're not interested in dinosaurs anymore, maybe we can spark an interest in pursuing mm -hmm. science or, or at least thinking about things in a scientific way. So that, that would be what I would That's hope. That's true. Yeah. We know some people, especially younger kids who start oh, out with dinosaurs, but then they switch over into like sharks or astronomy you know, or yeah, something. Yeah. There's so many different ways you can go with it. But a lot of times dinosaurs are the very first entryway into science, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just so appealing. <laughs> they have such good toys. Got, got your little gateway yeah. signs. <laughs> do you have any favorite toys that people have sent you? I do. Okay. So, um, first off, my personal favorite toy is this Allosaurus from when I was a <laughs> child. Specifically because um, this is from when Jurassic Park 2 came in really out. good shape for a favorite childhood toy. I was somewhat gentle with my things by the time I had this. <laughs> I was less gentle with my things when I had this. Um, and if you look at the at the difference between these two, like this guy lumbers along and can barely, you know, support his weight, whereas this guy can literally run circles around yeah. him. So even though this is not very good, like these little dinky arms, and it barely opens its mouth at all for an Allosaurus, um, <laughs> This does such a better job of communicating what a predatory dinosaur should be compared to Godzilla here. Is that supposed to so, be Godzilla um, or is that supposed to be a dinosaur? No, this, this is supposed to be Tyrannosaurus, I'm sure. It's the Imperial 1990 Tyrannosaurus. With red eyes. He, yeah, he used to light up his eyes and roar when you press the button, <laughs> but the battery's been dead since 2003. <laughs> so. that's, it. that's only like two, oh. two or three years before Jurassic Park came out then? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's a much older sculpt. Yeah. yeah. That reminds me of uh, Reptar from the Rugrats. Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Reptar. Oh, man. That takes me back. I forgot about Reptar. Because <laughs> I think he also had red eyes that lit up. Yeah, he was that green yellow, too. We should talk about Reptar. <laughs> oh, no. Now I need to find a Reptar. <laughs> um, anyway, my, my favorite toy that somebody has sent in uh, is probably this nice. guy. Oh, yes. You may recognize from our Therizinosaurus episode. I was not super familiar with Therizinosaurus before I did the research for that mm -hmm. episode. Like I knew, I knew the name and I knew it had claws and I knew like what a Segnosaur was or what, what we now call seg or, uh, Therizinosaurids. But like it had not sunk into me how <laughs> weird these animals yeah. are. And then on top of that, this toy is even further weird compared to that. Like, they tried so hard to make it accurate, <laughs> and yet they got it wrong in so many different minor places, and, and one major place, which is the, the 
pale here, but uh, yeah, that, that's probably my favorite that we've been sent. That's a good one. I think that one's second only to Dinochirus and weirdness of overall body. <laughs> Dinochirus was so cool. Like, I had these little, uh, my supermarket in Lamont sold these magazines that you could subscribe to and they would have dinosaur facts all throughout them. And one of them had the mystery of Dinochirus, these giant arms. We had no idea what the rest of it looked like, and we might never know what the rest of it looked like, and now we do, and it's weird. I just like the description of it as Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. <laughs> Basic, yeah, it kind of does look like Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> do you have more toys in your favorite collection, or is that the... That's all the ones that I have, like, with okay. me. I, I am somewhat fond of our... Um, uh, Deinonychus from the Deinonychus episode, just because it's very bad. <laughs> that one was just that one was a safety dinosaur that was sitting on the uh, the CNC mill. <laughs> the um, it, it was just so fat and lizard like <laughs> for an animal that ever since it was described has always been active and birdy. Like they had to they had to actively try to make it lazy looking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the point of the safety dinosaurs. You'd look at it and you think, what's that dinosaur doing there? And then get distracted and not actually use yeah. the CNC oh. machine. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a room full of dinosaur toys now? No, we have a nice. closet. So I, yeah, I guess technically we do have a room because it's a closet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we have a quite a backlog of things people have sent in that we will be I think we're going to do the the genus selection, sort of like um, like a normal election, where I'll 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 say these are the toys we have in our in the Thyria foreign category. We could have this Segasaur or this Ankylosaur, and then you know like have have primaries, and then have the different family groups or, or whatever level as the final election for for the for the next episode. I don't know. I, I haven't. I haven't entirely worked out the intricacies of the voting system for this yeah. yet. Are you going to do it as like a specific toy or are you going to do it as like the animal itself? I, I think the animal itself, because in cases like this, I, I, I do have a couple where I have multiple gotcha. toys of the same genus. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and then there's also I also have to do. I don't know if this will be something the patrons can choose, but I do have to do follow ups because even in the short time that we've been doing the show, there's been more research on some of the animals we've covered. And I have toys that we haven't covered for those animals. So I could do, you know, follow ups, just little follow ups. Nice. Uh, and I intend to always need to stay current <laughs> uh, as best as best we can. I I have often said that the show is your dinosaurs are wrong, not your dinosaurs were wrong. Like there's always going to be something we don't know about these animals. There's always going to be blank spots in our knowledge and we just have to fill them in as best we can. And you, the audience, should participate. <laughs> we have a similar thing with I Know Dino where it was it was an aspirational mm -hmm. title. <laughs> yeah, we get emails like, right. yeah, you yeah. know about dinosaurs? And we're like, yeah, we do. But we're not paleontologists, so we're we don't know learning. everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's been so, yeah, since we got a Discord channel, I have occasionally gotten PMs from people like, how accurate is this? I need to know in the next five minutes. And it's like, oh, OK, I do not have time to research this. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this obscurity. <laughs> yeah. I'm not an encyclopedia. That might speak to the quality of uh, Elizabeth's editing that People do think that it is extemporary, just off the cuff delivery of, of this yeah. information. But no, I, I, I have to research a lot before I can speak with even the amount of authority that I can muster on these topics. And some of it's like, you know it all while you're doing the video, but the thing, like three years later, it didn't all stick permanently. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is um, I, I am terrible at remembering formations and how old things are. Like I, I can I can usually remember is it early Cretaceous or late Cretaceous, but any more granular than that, I'm I'm, I'm needing to go to the internet. Well, for our viewers and listeners who want to know more about your dinosaurs are wrong, like where would they go? There's the YouTube channel, of course. Watch the videos. Yep. There's the YouTube 
We have a YouTube channel. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are on Discord. We have a Patreon. If the brief description that I gave of what I've been working on animation-wise was interesting to you, I frequently do um, behind-the-scenes animation streams of whatever I'm working on at one of our sponsorship tiers. But they also occur. I, I occasionally do a free one as well. So tune in for that. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to support what we're doing here, we would be happy to have you. Nice. And what's the link for the Patreon? It's patreon.com slash Y-D-A-W. Uh -huh, so simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. And th thank you for being patient with us while we got everything in order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. It sounds like you've got a lot of great stuff coming up. We hope so.